Hello and welcome to Tech Deals. Which desktop computer should you buy? Comparison video. I have two different desktop computers here that I'm going to be comparing and contrasting in this video, both of which have been reviewed previously on my channel. Links in the video description below to the full playlists of both of these machines. There will also be links in the video description below to Amazon.com where I bought both of these machines and you should too if you decide one of these is right for you. First up, we have the $450 Acer Aspire T, and then we have the $720 CyberPower PC. Both very good machines, different in different respects, which I'll talk about in this video. Now, one question that may be asked right away is, wait a minute, you're comparing two desktops at two very different price points. Yes, but there's a reason for that, and let me get into the various reasons, because with a few upgrades, you can actually make both of these machines cost a very similar amount and have very similar capabilities. In fact, I filmed that. There are upgrade videos in the playlist below showing both of these computers having parts added to them in a step-by-step -step process if that's something you're interested in doing. Now, first up, I'm gonna run through the various uh, similarities and differences of these machines. First, many parts are similar and then some are different. But before I even get into that, I want to address the key point here. This is made by Acer, which is known as a Tier 1 OEM, or Original Equipment Manufacturer. They build millions and millions of computers, desktops, and laptops in very large factories in China. These parts are customized for them. Now, it is an ATX case with an ATX power supply, which are just standard designs. In fact, the motherboard is replaceable on this. It does have the cutout on the back. I'll show you these in a minute. It does have the cutout on the back to replace the motherboard, but a computer like this really isn't meant to be upgraded. It can be, but it's not meant to be. The DVD drive, for example, is not a standard five and a quarter inch drive. It's a customized front of the case. And there are several other features about this which are not necessarily standard in terms of off-the-shelf parts. The cyber power, on the other hand, is very standard. Every single thing on this computer, you could build yourself. This is a Cooler Master Masterbox 5 case. The motherboard is an MSI B250 Bazooka. Those are sold on Amazon. These exact parts can be purchased individually and you can build your own machine. It comes with a thermal take power supply, for example. Everything is very standard. But you pay a bit more for that. How much? Less than you'd think because it has a graphics card in it and this one doesn't. This currently relies on integrated graphics. So before I get into the technical details, I just want to address the key point that this is really meant to be bought and used as it comes and when it's time for a major upgrade, you replace it with something new. The cyber power you can keep for a very long time. 10 plus years, you could go through complete system rebuilds and upgrades, the motherboard, the CPU, the graphics card, everything is completely replaceable with off-the-shelf components, including larger full-size ATX motherboards. You can keep this for a very long time. And if you want a machine that's easily upgradable, the cyber power is definitely the one you want to go with. Having said that, it does cost more up front and not everybody needs everything that it has, which is why I talk about the $450 option, which really is enough for many people who don't need everything this has to offer or perhaps don't even want something that large. Both of these computers come with one year warranty. Both of them come with Windows 10 out of the box and ready to run, which is the convenience of buying a pre-built machine. One quick note, I'm sure somebody in the comment section below is going to say, wait a minute, you shouldn't buy either one. You should custom build your own machine. Fair enough. There's nothing wrong with custom building your own machine. But A, not everybody wants to do that. B, it does run the challenge of turning you into your own tech support department because if you have a problem, who do you call for help? And number three, at the end of the day, it doesn't save as much money as many of you will think. When I talk about prices and the cost for upgrades later in this video, I'll briefly mention what it would cost to rebuild this using the exact same parts purchased off of Amazon. It doesn't save you as much as you'd think, but putting aside custom built machines, if you want something that you can go to Amazon, click buy now, two days later it shows up, plug it into the wall and turn it on and run, then definitely something like one of these two machines is what you wanna look at. Now parts, I said I'd compare what's in the machines. First of all, what's the same? They both have the same processor, the Intel i5-7400 CPU, four cores, 
four threads up to 3.5 gigahertz. For the average person, this is all the CPU power you need. For all the talk of i7s and Ryzen 7s and top of the line chips, the reality is most people are very well served with an i5 four core CPU, at least in 2017. These will run any current game at 1080p resolution without complaint. These will let you do 1080p video editing without a problem. They'll let you do 3D animation reasonably, not professional level work, but hobby level work. You can multitask, run web browsers. They really are enough computer for most people. Both machines come with eight gigabytes of system RAM. Now I have upgraded both to 16. Personally, I do a lot of multitasking, so I won't use a machine with less than 16 gigs of RAM, but not everybody has to. If your needs are modest, if you only run a couple of programs at a time, most people can still get by with eight gigabytes of RAM. Storage, I'm gonna skip for a minute because that's different. DVD drives I'll mention briefly. They both have a DVD reader and writer. The type of drive is different. This is a standard desktop five and a quarter inch drive. That is actually a laptop drive. It's a short mini tray that comes out. And if you look at the inside of it, it's the same sort of DVD drive you'd have in a laptop rather than a desktop. Why, I don't know, but it is. But it works the same and basically accomplishes the same function. The motherboards are different, so I'll talk about those separate. The power supplies are different. However, they both come, as I said before, with Windows 10 Home Edition. They both come with AC Wi-Fi. The implementation's a bit different, but they both come with an excellent Wi-Fi adapter. They both have gigabit ethernet networking to be able to plug a cable into it. They both come with keyboards and mice. The CyberPower has better keyboards and mice with it, but they both come with a keyboard and mouse. And both will basically run the same programs out of the box, not counting games. More on that in a second. Now let's take a look at the differences between these machines. First up, case size. The Acer Aspire has a mini tower case with a customized front, which does limit your upgrade options. I said before, you can upgrade the motherboard. You can, it does have the standard port in the back, but this really isn't meant to be changed. No extra case fans are included in this case other than the one that's built into the power supply. The CyberPower, on the other hand, comes with a Cooler Master Master Box 5 standard mid-tower ATX case with upgrades. The five and a quarter inch drive bay here is not standard, that's provided by CyberPower. There are two red LED intake fans in the front and one red LED exhaust fan in the back, also not standard. And the top vents are also added, which are not standard to this case giving you space to add either a 120 or 140 millimeter either top vent fan or liquid cooler in the future if that's something you're interested in doing. So for future upgradability and room to grow, definitely plus one to the CyberPower. Moving on from the case, let's talk about the motherboard. The Acer Aspire has an H110 chipset proprietary motherboard designed for Acer. The BIOS is very locked down, which you will know all about if you watched my uh, solid state drive installation video and the cloning process, which can be a challenge on this machine. On the other hand, the CyberPower comes with a B250 motherboard. Now that chipset has more features on it than the H110, but more important than even that is the fact that this is an MSI B250 Bazooka motherboard. It is not a proprietary board, it is a standard retail board. You can go onto Amazon and buy an MSI B250 Bazooka. So BIOS updates and support for this board are provided by MSI. You don't have to depend upon a computer manufacturer to take care of you in that regard. Several other feature differences between the motherboards, two memory slots, four memory slots, two serial ATA ports, six serial ATA ports, and that's a key because if you want to add more hard drives or more solid state drives, having those ports is really, really nice. Now, both motherboards do in fact only have one graphics card slot. You can't put two AMD RX 480s in here in Crossfire on that board because there isn't a place to put the second. But there is room for a full-size ATX motherboard in here, which there isn't in the Acer Aspire. So for future upgradability, plus two to the CyberPower. Storage. Now both computers include a hard drive as standard, however the size is different. The Acer Aspire comes with a two terabyte hard drive, the CyberPower only comes with one terabyte. So that might be a factor in your decision in terms of how much storage space you want. Power supplies. The Acer Aspire comes with a 300 watt power supply, 
The Cyber Power comes with a 600 watt power supply, and it's a good one. The one in here is a Thermaltake power supply, and it comes with all sorts of connectors and cables for anything you'd care to upgrade this to in the future, including multiple graphics cards. We have multiple PCI Express power connectors on this power supply to handle anything you'd care to put in there, put in, there in the future. Finally, we come to graphics cards. Graphics cards are one of the biggest differences between these machines because the Acer Aspire doesn't actually come with one, whereas the CyberPower does. The Acer Aspire out of the box depends upon the integrated graphics on the Intel chip, the HD630 graphics. Now, they're not bad. If all you're doing is watching YouTube videos such as this one, browsing the web, editing images and videos, if you want to play casual games such as Rocket League, Minecraft, and League of Legends, this out of the box is all you need to do that. On the other hand, do you want to play Battlefield 1, Rise of the Tomb Raider, Grand Theft Auto 5, Mass Effect Andromeda? You're going to need to install a graphics card. Now you can put a very nice graphics card in here. And in fact, in the upgrade video, I show you how to do that. There's currently a GTX 1060 installed in this machine. And no, you don't have to replace the power supply to do it. I cover that in the installation and the uh, upgraded performance video linked in the description below. The Cyber Power Machine comes with a very nice graphics card. It has an MSI RX 484 gigabyte graphics card. This is a very nice card that I have tested extensively on my channel. You can play all current games on this graphics card, and I do mean all. You can play them at 1080p resolution, at an average of 60 frames per second, at an average of high detail. Most games you'll be able to put at ultra detail. Not all games, and the number of games will drop over time. That's pretty normal as graphics cards age. But you can currently expect to play all current games without a problem at some reasonable detail setting on this machine as it comes out of the box. You'll get a lot of service out of that card. Now, this has an RX 480. Many of you may be wondering why I put a GTX 1060. I don't want to get into the weeds on that, but I will say that if you buy this machine, put a 1060 in it. If you custom build, get an RX 480 because it's a better deal. The short, short answer is this computer's power supply would have to be replaced and there isn't room inside with the drive cages and the size of the case to handle most RX 480 cards. It's much simpler to simply put in a GTX 1060 even if it isn't quite as good of a deal of a card as the RX 480 is, it is a deal when installed in a machine like that and basically provides the same level of performance. Those are all the major differences between these two computers. In total, with the upgrades that I've put into these machines, I've upgraded them both to 16 gigs, I've put solid state drives in both, and I added a GTX 1060 graphics card in here. You are looking at a total price of $860 for the CyberPower, versus $830 for the Acer Aspire T. $30 less expensive, but you do give up some things to save that whole $30. So those are the major differences between these computers. When you add everything up that I've done to these machines, you are looking at $860 for the CyberPower machine versus $830 for the Acer Aspire T with all the upgrades accounted. The major difference what brought this up was adding the GTX 1060 graphics card. My opinion, in short, is that if you buy this with the intention of putting a GTX 1060 in there, please save yourself the trouble and just buy the CyberPower. Why? Because it gives you basically the same performance you get over here, but for $30 more, you get a better motherboard, a better power supply, a better case, more options for future expandability, and you don't have to mess with trying to install a graphics card in a small, basic pre-built machine. The other upgrades, the RAM upgrade and the solid state drive upgrade cost the same for either machine. Do those whether you want to or not. The $860 and the $830 price include them. Do or don't as you wish. This does not mean, however, that this is not a good computer. It is. First of all, as I said before, it works great out of the box, even if you never put a graphics card in here. But what if you do want to be able to play Grand Theft Auto V? You don't have to go with a GTX 1060. In fact, my main recommendation if you want to buy this computer and more casually game is to find a middle of the road solution, which is this. This is the EVGA GeForce GTX 1050 graphics card, $100.
What it does is it takes this from 450 to 550, which is substantially lower than 720. This graphics card right here will play Grand Theft Auto V at high detail at 60 frames a second without complaint. It will not, however, play all current games at high detail at 60 frames a second at 1080p like the 1060 or the RX 480 would. This is a middle of the road option for somebody who wants to play games but only casually and doesn't care so much what your detail settings are. Example, the division. On this card, you're gonna to have to set it to medium detail. You will not be able to play the division at high on this card. You would on the 1060. Do you care? That's a personal choice. But honestly, for a computer like this, this is really the card that I would recommend. Now, coming up in just a minute after the end of this, I am going to take the side panels off and show you these machines in detail. But if you're not interested and I've answered your questions, great. Like this video if you like it. Share it with your friends if you loved it. Remember to subscribe to my channel with that big, huge button directly below. Questions and comments in the comment section. And as always, check out the links in the video description below. The link to Amazon.com for both of these machines will be down there. The link to the full playlist for both of these machines will be right down there. And then finally, the link to my Patreon account will be down there. Do you like my channel? Do you like the videos that I make? please consider supporting my channel. I bought both of these machines, neither were manufacturer samples. So if you want me to be able to keep bringing you interesting comparison videos such as this, uh, unboxings, upgradings, how-to guides, if you can give a dollar, five dollars, it is all greatly appreciated. So my link to Patreon will be down in the video description below. And now let me show you what these two machines look like inside. Here we have both computers opened up with the side panels removed. First of all, you can immediately see how much more room the cyber power has inside of it than the Acer does. Now this isn't going to matter to everybody, and this is why I show this, because some people may be perfectly happy with what the Acer has to offer, but if you do want future upgradability, there is really no comparison. Here on the cyber power, this is just a plastic cover that blocks the power supply, just providing you with a nicer looking appearance. This does have a clear side panel window so you can see inside the machine. Here you can see our RX 480 graphics card that comes with the computer. You can see that I've upgraded the RAM there. There's two sticks of crucial ballistics uh, memory that I replaced. The hard drive cage is down here. There is a toolless drive cage down here that gives you room to add another hard drive without any issues. The solid state drive, which you can see right here, was added during the upgrade video linked down below. There is a mounting tray for that and there's room to add another one above it if you want to. There's also a free five and a quarter inch drive bay here if you want to add more in something else in the future. One of the key things I want to draw your attention to is this big open space right here. While the motherboard does not have a slot for an extra graphics card, if you ever replace the motherboard in the future, you can absolutely put a full-size ATX board here and there are plenty of slots to add a second graphics card if you wanted to. You can see one of the PCI Express extra power connectors right here. There's actually two more of these you can't see that are tied off in the back. So you could install two high-end graphics cards and you would have enough power and enough PCI Express power connectors without having to replace the 600 watt thermal take power supply. Coming over to the Acer Aspire T, you can see the graphics card that I added previously. And then there is a solid state drive added right here. There's no more room for expansion beyond these two upgrades, however. There's no extra room for an extra hard drive and there certainly is no room for a secondary graphics card. Now the motherboard is replaceable, but on this machine I wouldn't recommend it. The power supply is standard, but you'll notice the power supply is on the top of the case here, whereas on the cyber power it's on the bottom, which is more contemporary in modern custom built machines. I mentioned before about not installing an RX 480 in the Acer Aspire T. This is in the way. You'd completely get in the way here. I own several RX 470 and RX 480 graphics cards. None of them fit in this machine and most of them would require replacing the power supply. I have now turned the computers around so that you can see the back of them. This is the ATX cutout I mentioned before on the Acer Aspire T computer. This is removable just like the standard ATX cutout on the CyberPower. So it is replaceable, but I don't recommend it on this machine. You'll notice there's far more slots here for add-in cards in the future than there is on the Acer Aspire. And of course, you can also see the size difference as well. Thank you again so much for watching. I will see all of you in the next video.